Hello again, everybody. Now, I'm going to splice this video into uh, my second uh, part, probably. I don't know how many parts are going to be in this thing, but I neglected to say that this is going to be filmed in parts. I've already filmed all the way up to where I've got them finished, but um, I didn't realize through editing that I was going to have to split these up into smaller chunks so that I could uh, upload them in a timely manner. So, um, this is just a FYI that there will be more than one video. There's obviously seeing that on this one because this is the second video. So, um, please, if you would watch each piece till completion, and then you'll get the general idea of what's going on. Okay, what we're going to do now is the crimson. With this color, what I'm doing is I'm avoiding the barrel, I mean the wooden stock. I'm avoiding the uh, facings because those have to be painted yellow, but I also want the black. And I have to avoid the straps that I've already painted. So those are the main things I'm avoiding. I'm avoiding anything white that I've already painted. Uh, preparing to leave room for the facings. Let's paint one guy so you can see what I've done. Okay, that's one red coat right there. He's not finished, of course, but that's what they'll look like. Now, let me pause and finish painting the red coats. All right, now I'm going with the wood. Um, there's only a couple of things that are wood on them. There would be mainly the, the rifles and like drumsticks. All right, basically I'm just coloring the musket. You can't even see that, I don't think, but coloring the musket nutmeg, this one right here, just gives it a brown tone. And when I go back over it with the silver during, on the barrel, it'll, that wood will really make it pop. I'll be back in just a second. All right, now I've got the wood done, and I forgot to tell you that, yeah, the standard bearers are carrying a wood pole, so I painted those too. Um, so when you take a look at the figures as they're, as they're coming along, you know, we've got, they're looking pretty good, okay? They're looking like British soldiers. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is the other major color, which is facing, and then after facing, I'm just going to touch up with a bunch of little things. So, uh, now on the facing, it's a yellow color, and yellow doesn't really do well with, um, with, uh, um, what am I saying, with black. So what I did was I took some white paint and went over the areas that are going to be faced with just a very light color of, of white, just barely touched it with white. So now when I put my yellow down on that area, the yellow will stand out even better. All right, here we go. Putting the yellow to the facings. Trying to leave a little black on the top and bottom of the facing between the red and the yellow and the flesh and the yellow. Now I am in no way, shape, or form trying to make these miniatures museum quality, you know, competition quality. What I'm trying to do is show you a technique on the video. So, uh, I might be taking a few shortcuts to get this all in time. Let's see if I can squeeze in a collar or two. Okay, now when it comes to collars, uh, what I do with collars is I get a small brush, a very thin brush, and then I take, it, take the paint and I just drag it across the neck. I just drag it across um, and the paint will usually stay where it needs. Like I'll tuck it under his chin and drag real quick. That came with painting a ton of Napoleonic figures. I have all of Waterloo painted. Whew. For Napoleon's battles. 
in 15 millimeter. And that's where that came from. Because that's how I painted my 15 millimeters. And that worked out rather well. Okay. Um, not 100% finished yet. But you can see right there that you got, you got your yellow backings, got your... I, I could probably play with these figures right now. They're not finished, but I could play with them. I'd be I'd be happy to play with these. Okay, let me continue on. What are we going to do next? Oh, finish the other figures with their facings. Then I'll be back. Okay, now we're just going to be doing some detail work. Um, one of the main one of the main things I want to detail is the musket. Uh, the musket is going to have like a metallic uh, barrel and bayonet, and then the uh, sling will be white. It's not a whole lot of it because there's only like a couple of strips on each of the guns, right? And I use a really bright color like silver or, I don't know, bolt gun metal, something like that. Something that's a little bit uh, more silver and less black when it comes to the metallics. Uh, the reason why is I think it makes it stick out more. This color I'm using right now is the... Vallejo Chainmail Silver. Um, it's not pure silver, that's too white. The Chainmail Silver is, gets it a little bit of that black. Uh, you know, rustic look. But it's not so dark that it looks black. Okay. So you get kind of a shiny metallic look when it comes to the gun, right? Okay, back that out. Let's pause it while I do the rest of them. All right, now I'm going to make their canteens blue, um, blue canteens. Well, let me show you what I just did before I move on. Okay, zooming in. You can kind of see the guy, well, I don't know if you can see him at all, but zooming all the way out, bringing the figure up. How about that? I don't know. All right, moving on to the other figures, and I'll be right back. All right, now one of the final steps is I'm going to do some epaulets in silver. I'm going to touch up some uh, the metal... Uh, guards that are on the front of the uh, drummer's bear skin with some silver. Um, this unit doesn't have an officer. If I did, I would do his laces in silver. Um, I'm using mithril silver from Citadel. Let's go through here and see if there's any epaulets. No epaulets. Those guys are all grunts. No epilepsy, all grunts. Okay, these standard bearers do have epaulets. I just realized that the hide for the drum is not done and I like to use a very very light brown for that almost a almost a what do you call it a goose feather it's a very light brown and I got a huge bottle for just every now and then using that yeah that's crazy I probably said this uh, about a hundred times in this video try to leave a little black around the edges 
differentiates the... And when you're talking about a pewter figure that's on the table with a hundred other figures, nobody's ever really going to see the fine details on every single figure. This just makes it easier for them to identify it at like a... Because they might have to reach, you know, they're looking at your figures from like two or three feet away. There you go. And then the drummer has... skin on his drum. And I'll do the bottom too just for GPs. Not that anybody in the world would ever see that once I get it mounted on my base. Last but not least, before I go into my dipping process, the last thing I do is I take some black paint and I go around the figure looking for any irregularities, anything that needs to be touched up. And I save the best co I save the best color for last. Gold. Um, there's only a couple of places where gold goes. Um, one of them is the spear tips of your standard bears. and on some epaulets. Also, if you have any sword or bayonet sheaths, put a little tip of gold at the very tip of the sheath. Because normally uh, the sheaths have these little brass caps at the end, and gold really stands out better than brass. Looking at their little sword tips right there. That's what you're doing. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the finished product and uh, before we go into my second and third video, which, which is going to be uh, basing them and then and how to flock the base and texture the base. And then the, another video will be how to apply the dip which is kind of like a wash but it is uh, also a sealant here we go check these out